Heavenly Father, I thank you. Indeed, it's not by might, it's not by power, but it is by your grace. Yes. Heavenly Father, if we take a long, if we look at what is happening in other nations, Heavenly Father, and we are here all dressed up, all pretty, all with... We are lacking nothing, Heavenly Father. Yes. We have no worries, Heavenly Father. Amen. God, I thank you and I thank you and I thank you. Amen. Heavenly Father, as your word is about to come, blow our hearts, Heavenly Father. Let your word sink in through it and let it perform miracles, Heavenly Father. God, I pray that we'll be a doer of your words and not just a listener. In Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus' mighty name, let them... Be a miracle in our life in the name of Jesus Christ. Because your word says, Heavenly Father, a tree that does not bear fruit must be cut and it will be put in the fire. Let us be trees that will bear fruit in Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. 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 Hello. Hi. I am very, very nervous, but <laughs> just look at how thick my makeup is. That's how nervous I am. <laughs> Um, today's preaching is, um, well, the theme of this youth is taken from 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 8. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 8, that's where we're taking uh, the theme of this youth from, this youth gathering. And I read, finally, all of you have unity of mind, sympathy brotherly love, a tender heart, and a humble mind. I will read. Finally, all of you have unity of mind, sympathy, brotherly love, and a tender heart, and a humble mind. Originally, we were supposed to do um, a play, um, and the theme of that play was unity and love. But because uh, of lack of time, we scraped out the play, and I decided to continue with that preaching based on that theme. As we've heard over and over and over again, life is a battle. Whether you like it or not, life is a battle. And it's not a battle that can be abandoned. Because we all know abandoning this battle means what? Death. If you abandon the battle of life, it's death. But the Bible teaches us that death is still something that cannot be avoided, whether we like it or not. If we look at Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 16 to 18, it says, No one remembers the wise, and no one remembers the fools. In days to come, we will all be forgotten. We must all die, wise and foolish. So since we're all going to die, we have a choice. Whether we decide to live as fools, or we decide to live as wise. But since we're all going to die anyway, should we all say, okay, let me just leave as a fool. Let me leave how I want because I'm going to die anyway. Who cares? No, because Proverbs chapter 2 verse 2 also said, yes, beg for knowledge and plead for insight. Amen. And it's through knowledge that you learn to fear God. And by fearing God, you get to know who God is. Amen. God bless you. Nowadays, youth has made, they have made their purpose, their sole goal is to just enjoy the moment. I don't care about tomorrow. I'm just gonna enjoy today. There's this rapper, some rapper woke up one day and then made a song and put YOLO in it. You only live once. I'm sure all of the youth here knows. You only live once. And so when people wake up, the little part-time job that they do and they get money from it, they'll post a picture of it and put it on Facebook. Just said they are trying to show people they are rich. Even those from their little part-time job. And they'll put hashtag YOLO. Yeah. One person will wake up, honey in one hand, cigarette in the other hand, YOLO. <laughs> but there's something I want to tell you, that if you make it your goal to live once, trust me, you will live once and you will die as pitiful humans. Mm. But that's not what the Bible tells us. The Bible tells us there is another life. And whether you like it or not, this other life it will take place. After this life, there is another life. There is the eternal life that God has promised for those who obey his words, for his children. And when you compare eternal to nowadays, what's the human lifespan? 70 years, 80 years? If you compare 70 years or 80 years to eternal, 
my friend, there's a big difference. Amen. It's like a split of a second. Yes. So if you make it your sole goal to enjoy this life, and yeah, you will suffer after. You will suffer. Pa. Yes. But today, beloved, the message is not about death because I believe we are alive today. We are present. And so we have the chance to do something in our life. We have the chance to cause miracles. We have the chance to move forward. And so I'd like to talk about the present, which is what? A gift from God. Amen. Amen. There is one particular animal that I really like, and I, I base my preaching on this animal. This animal is called a wolf. We all know the wolf as a ferocious animal. But there's one particular thing about the wolf that is very interesting. They travel in pack. That's what's so interesting about the wolf. Why do you think they travel in pack? First, for strength. Secondly, they look after each other's back. They protect each other. They are much stronger when they are in pack. And each of the wolves that are in pack, they have a role to play. No one is just traveling just like that. When you see a pack of a wolf, every wolf, each and every one wolf, has a role to play. But let's say what happens when, let's say one or two or three wolves decide, me dear, I don't want to follow the pack. I'm tired of following the pack. I'll just go my own way. What happens when that happens? Their strength has been reduced. Secondly, their role has been abandoned. So when they face an enemy, they leave a hole for the enemy to penetrate and attack from the inside. And obviously, those who decided to abandon the path, they are no longer at mercy either. Because also their, their, their strength has been vaguely reduced. A lot. So that like the enemies would just jump on them and attack them. They become vulnerable to any attack. There is a reason why we come to church every day, beloved. Yes, it's to praise God. Yes, it's to worship Him. It's good, but to grow also as Christians. Amen. God does not like standing like what? What's the word again? Stagnant. Sorry, the, the English is not coming out. <laughs> God does not like stagnant. Stay in one place. Nothing moving forward. God does not like that. And that's why we come to church to grow as Christians, to make up for each other where we fall short, to encourage each other, to love each other, to live in that love that Jesus wants us to live in. However, nowadays, not just in church, but at your workplace, at your school, at your anywhere, we are all family. Because the Bible says, love your neighbor as yourself. But people have the tendency to think, my neighbor is someone I know. My neighbor is someone who lives. No. We all live on this earth. God created this place. And as long as we live on this earth, everyone, the person you don't know, who you know, they are all neighbors. Amen. 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 But what happens when family attack each other? They attack their legs. My friend, it's not nice. <laughs> Let us look at Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12 to 13. Wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principality, against power, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly place. You hear? We do not wrestle against flesh and blood. So then, why are you wrestling against your family? Why are you wrestling against your brother? Why are you wrestling against your church leaders? Why are you wrestling against your pastors? Why are you wrestling against your teachers? Why are you wrestling against your mom, your dad, your sister, your brother? This is not how God said we should do. We should wrestle against the principalities and the spiritual hold of wickedness. And I'd like to also read from 1 Corinthians Chapter 12, verse 12 to 26. Now I'd be very happy if someone could just read this one for me, please. 12 to 26. For as the body is one and has many members, 
but all the members of that one body, being many, are one body. So also is Christ. For by one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. For in fact, the body is not one member, but many. In verse 15, if the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I'm not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I'm not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where would be the smelling? But now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body just as he pleased. And if they were all one member, where would the body be? Verse 20. But now indeed there are many members yet one body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. No, much rather, those members of the body which seems to be weaker are necessary. And those members of the body which tend to be less honorable, on these we bestow greater honor. And our um, unpresentable parts have greater modesty. But our presentable parts have no need. But God composed the body, having given greater honor to the part which last ate. That there should be no schemes in the body, but that the members should have the same care for one another. Verse 26, And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. And if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. Amen. Amen. We are each of one of us, each one of us, we are members of Christ. No one is useless. None of us is useless. We are each part of Christ. But how can Christ's body be divided? Yeah. It shouldn't be divided. We should pray for each other's suffering. Nowadays, when your brother is suffering, instead of praying for your brother, you are here again. Hey, God, show him. Show him who is the master. My name is Tionica, Tionica. Does this please God? Does this please God, brothers and sisters? Do not look down or rebuke anyone in church or at your workplace or in your school, anyone you meet on the street. For we are all family and family shouldn't be attacking each other's necks. For what? Like nowadays in the crown, best friends, they suddenly stop talking to each other. She disrespected me, so I'm not talking to her. Sad. She disrespected you, so no, you're not talking to her. You know, there's something that I always say to myself. If we just could see into each other's thoughts, we'll go around carrying swords. Swords, because if you just read other people's minds, hey, you wouldn't like what you read at all. <laughs> you wouldn't like what you read. <laughs> but imagine, God reads all this. God sees our thought. Bible says everything lays bare before him. God sees our thought, and you are still alive. You are still healthy. You still laugh. You still cry. God didn't punish you. She just let it slide. Even when he disciplines us, it's because of love. And not because he hates us. So, why, so then why are you looking down on that brother that is struggling? For what crime did that brother commit? That nowadays, right, you don't even talk to him anymore. Uhuna, watch him. When that brother is to you, you pretend you haven't seen him. And you continue praying, God help me. Amen. Why ignoring that brother? Amen. The Bible says in Matthew 5, love and pray for those who persecute you. For he lets rain and sunshine on both evil and good. Amen. It says, if you only speak to your friends or if you only speak, People, you know, have you done anything out of the ordinary? No. You haven't done anything out of the ordinary. It's every day. Now, me dear, cause you are disrespecting me. And now, you are disrespecting me. So, me dear, ah, me dear, me who need you come? Me dear, I don't even want to talk. Sad. Let me tell you something very like. Well, it's a stupid story. Me and my friends, we argue each week. Each week, it's in a routine. When we see each other, there must be an argument. Last time we went to Tim Hortons, and normally we like to take turns. 
we'll go pays and like you know we like to take time or sometimes we just bring our money together and this time we didn't have enough money so we we're like okay we're all gonna get cheap beatrice and kwandra so perhaps <laughs>